The Sonderkraft Farzu. The Sonderkraft Farzu. The Sonderkraft Farzu. 243.5 Panzerwerkhonenwagen. The SDKFZ 234 2 Puma was a light armored reconnaissance vehicle developed from late 1943 to mid 1944, peaking at about 100 vehicles per month, totaling around 2300. On paper, the Puma was designed to be organized into seven regiments, making up the entire Panzer Spee Company of all Panzer divisions. But by mid 1944, even though there were at least two other SDKFC 234 variants, there simply weren't enough to fill Germany's Panzer Division needs, and the theorized organization was now scrapped into Filmian roles all along the German front. Now, however, reorganized and fine-tuned to better suit Germany's needs, the Puma was the first variant to reach the front line. The 2nd SS Panzer Division Das Reich and Panzer Layer Panzer Division received the first order with a full complement of 26 armored vehicles. It is rumored that around 15 Pumas were sent to the 1st SS Panzer Division. Regardless, after news of the invasion, most divisions containing the Puma and the other 234 variants were sent to the new Allied Front. June 7, 1944, the second day of Allied Normandy landings. Word reaches command in the inner workings of Nazi Germany late, only at 9 o'clock the prior morning. Their defenses had failed, and to German command surprise, the Allies had invaded on the one day they were guaranteed to not invade, due to a storm raging on the coast of Normandy. The Germans stationed along the beach seized this opportunity to lax their guard, and there are even accounts of officers drunkenly oversleeping the entire invasion altogether. Just west of the beaches being invaded, and after intense and devastating battle with significant losses on both sides, the American sector is held by the 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions. Having parachuted in on the night prior, and after taking heavy losses, allowed the 4th Infantry Division to land at Utah Beach without encountering any problems. American paratroopers, Rendezvous and Destiny, have established a 15-kilometer bridgehead by the evening of the 7th. While German response was slow, the Axis ordered a counteroffensive to Bort and Bessin, north of Bayeux, which was halted by Allied close air support, destroying a large number of tanks and armored vehicles. It is theorized that these skirmishes included remnants of the Panzer Layer Division, 2nd SS Panzer Division, and various other makeshift divisions, many of which being outfitted with Pumas and sometimes entire complements. It can be assumed that the mass of Pumas and the other 234 models were destroyed in this time frame after which the counter was abandoned with the order given to advance only at night. The Puma actually had very little reported combat, and the combat the Puma did see doesn't exactly fall under everyone's term of combat. While suffering losses left and right, most divisions that didn't surrender were forced to retreat and were known to use the natural fencing of cobblestone walls deep-rooted with flora. While retreating, the Axis had set up several kill fields, which were enforced AT gun positions or battle positions for armored vehicles. The Puma, however, had a very specific role, reconnaissance, and from first-hand accounts, the Puma excelled at this position, replacing all further requested needs of a recon vehicle with the lack of firepower when forced to engage the enemy. It included the same 50mm Quack L60 gun carried by the Panzer III L, the J, and L tanks. Let's evaluate this statement. The lack of firepower when forced to engage the enemy. The mission statement of the Puma was to see but not to be seen and engage the enemy only when necessary. Meaning the radio was actually the most powerful weapon the Puma possessed. In most cases, Pumas were organized into three armored vehicle groups for intelligence gathering missions on enemy movements and locations. As stated by Oberst D. Fabian von Bornen von Alstahl, who served in Panzerauflockrungs Abteilung 1. Reports were made in Morse code and communications were good. The operators were well trained and could send reports quickly, but it was up to the section commander to formulate the report. This soon became a matter of routine. Voice transmissions were used only between vehicles. Every report concerning the enemy's whereabouts and even negative information contained in periodic situation reports helped build up a picture of the overall enemy situation. The essential ingredients of a successful reconnaissance section were a well-drilled team, mutual confidence, and strong nerves. Our main thought was always, there's always a way out, 
and not all is lost so as long as one is alive. However, with the swift Allied success in Normandy, the traditional need for a reconnaissance vehicle was negated, as Germany was now on the defensive across the front. The Puma, an entire 234 series, was again reorganized and left to the direct opposite orders of the reconnaissance advance, now reporting on the Axis retreat and movement of Allies thereafter. So with all that in mind, I'd like to talk about the Puma's performance in War Thunder and how, if you, like me, love the Puma, could be using it a little more effectively or at least a little more realistically. With the V command, spotting tanks is absolutely free. Pinging the map by pressing M and clicking a sector is also free. Because as stated, the Puma was designed for reconnaissance, even given the 50 and 75 millimeter variants. Engagement was only done when absolutely crucial. In War Thunder, the Puma comes equipped with the ability to scout enemy vehicles. This is crucial in providing information to your team and also directly to your survivability, as knowing which tanks you can and cannot physically penetrate and which ones you should disable and leave for your team is crucial to ensuring your survival when sneaking around the back line and reporting enemy positions. Battle positions isn't something everyone always talks about but it's one of the most important operations in tank warfare. Being able to provide fire from a position, or in the Puma's case, to provide crucial information, and then rapidly being able to depart from that position for scouting or for further orders is quite nearly the bread and butter of a reconnaissance vehicle. I've noticed this kind of playstyle in the higher tiers of the Puma's viability, but not so much in the lower tiers and it is crucial for survivability in this vehicle. Remember, agility is your biggest weapon in the game, so always use that to your advantage, even when directly engaging targets from cover. You never want to give the full profile of your tank, so firing adjacent to a wall or hill, exposing only what's needed for the shot is the best practice when having to engage an enemy in the Puma. The support role will leave some kills for your team, Disable enemy tanks via tracks, barrel, and other crucial modules. Again, knowing which tanks you can and cannot penetrate obviously comes with time and experience. But as a general rule, I always try to engage solely from the side at 90 degrees or beyond, never giving my opponent the chance to properly aim and fire at me. Knowing where tank modules are and which tanks you can and simply cannot penetrate is crucial for every vehicle, but especially so for one of this role. You are only provided with 30 millimeters of armor, so speed is your friend. If you know you cannot penetrate your target, try to disable the barrel or breach first, then track them and move along pinging them and putting them off for your team. Aiming at waypoints while bearing in mind weak points are a topic of its own, and you can find loads of useful resources on just about every tank and target you could experience in the game. But never forget, the resource is actually available to you in War Thunder. Experiment around with the damage preview, and chuck yourself against targets you may be already familiar with to further learn their weak points and modules. I personally take the Puma all the way up to tier 5.7 having a very hard time penetrating anything at all. I personally just love the speed and agility of the vehicle. Plus, it's all that much sweeter when you do kill targets that are two to three tiers higher from you. As a general rule, the Puma excels in getting behind enemy lines and setting up flanks. Use this to your advantage by making a plan to flank or set up a battle position with relative cover and then wait for the perfect moment to strike your target. Never be afraid to use your rangefinder. If you need to properly adjust your zeroing, do so by finding sight distance control. The 50mm Puma will penetrate most things that you encounter from the side or at least behind the tracks. This isn't universal, however, with each faction's tanks posing different weak spots. If you aren't up tiered at all, however, you can fight most things on the field head on, though it isn't recommended as again the Puma has very little armor. Your biggest enemy, just like in real life, is going to be from above. You're extremely susceptible to close air support, 
which the majority of close air support pilots know that a Puma is an easy kill from above with nearly any caliber weapon. And <laughs> let's be honest here. Pilots have a tendency to pick a Puma out of a crowd any day, even over open hatch tanks. <sighs> Obviously, the life of any reconnaissance troop for either side was packed full of hardships and stress. The art of concealing and observing, moving behind enemy lines, and even as simple as moving around in low gear and easing in and out of said gear as to not emit loud engine noises, were committed with nerves of steel and guts of iron. Recon troops did and continue to provide crucial information for any army's advance or retreat. In War Thunder, it's a lot easier to negate the stress and fear of dying, which leads to hard pushes and skirmishes head on with enemies. Try to keep in mind, your job is information, meaning your map and scout ability are the bread and butter of your kit. In Wheels, well, they're standard issue pervitin, because like most German recon vehicles, this thing is cracked. 